cut is what the director says at the end of a scene to let everyone on set know that we've stopped filming. Wow, okay, good to know. Mr. Richard, where did that come from? Where did what come from? Cut. It just means stop. Then why doesn't the director just say stop? Well, Carter, um, <clears throat> cut is, as you know, a sharp word. That's it. it. It gets everybody's attention, and that's where it came from. Google says that in the old days, the director would say cut because they literally had to cut the film with the razor. Well, Google doesn't know everything, and I think you should know that. Now, you're a good kid, but you talk too much. Now, when we pick Mr. Diggler up, tell him he can't talk. Won't that be talking? I mean, don't bother Mr. Diggler like you're bothering me right now, okay? Uh, Google that. Google bothering people. Say goodbye to your mamas and daddies. This is the last time they'll ever see their little babies again. Oh, stop that. Stop it. My name is R. Scott. It is not professor. It is not doctor. It is R. Scott. You're here for the next 30 days to make a feature film in college, a student film. You're not in Hollywood. You're in Nacogdoches. Your parents have left you stranded in the piney woods of East Texas. Now look around. Smell a tree, you city kids. Now some of you may think you're professional filmmakers, but you're not. You're all amateurs. There's nothing wrong with that. It just means that you make little short movies that your grandparents pretend to like. But don't ever confuse that with real art. You are not a filmmaker. And you are most certainly not a professional filmmaker. Now, there are several more things you're not. You're not here to make friends this summer, though you most likely will. You're not here to fall in love or, God forbid, make love, which you know nothing about. You're amateurs. This is the time in your lives when you must put away the toys of childhood and pick up the tools of man or women. Uh, women pick up tools all the time. <sighs> Sorry we're late. Traffic was bad. Lots of cows in the road. Actually, it was a tractor. We're so glad to welcome you, Mr. Diggler. Skippy Diggler the third. I'm Richard Stone. I'm the teacher for the summer movie class. Good. You can carry my bags. And what's this little creature? This is Carter. He is a beginning film student, and he has been assigned to be your assistant and to help in any way he can. And what's wrong with him? Can he not talk? Everyone is so excited to welcome you to Nacogdoches. It is the oldest town in Texas. Is that a good thing? Let's be off. You will work 12 hours a day, six days a week in this class. You will be fed once a day. You will eat what we feed you. If you're a vegan like myself, though I eat fish and meat occasionally, or you're a gluten, you bring your own food. Last summer I let my standards slip. Richard, my assistant, is a soft-hearted mess of a man. An actor. Paranoid. Sensitive. Broke. Wears his heart on his sleeve. You know how they are. Last summer he gave you sodas, candy, and all sorts of fattening crap because he wants to be liked. Needs to be liked. He turned you into a bunch of whiny brats that ruined our summer feature. He lost control and let you fire the professional I brought in to train you. This will not happen again. 
This summer, you'll get one plastic cup. You'll write your name on that cup, and you'll drink water from the tap and nothing else. There will be no sandals, flip-flops, or shorts on my set. You will wear closed-toed shoes and nothing else. And pants. You will wear pants. Where's my car? This is it, except it's mine. My contract said town car. Black, discreet, clean. It did not say the truck from Hee Haw. Can we talk about this later? I mean, you are a week late. You missed all the pre-production meetings and casting sessions. Everyone's waiting for you. OK. Carter, get me a coffee. Uh, we'll get coffee on the way. And a liquor store. You do realize this is a school, right? We can't have alcohol on campus. Is that the way it's going to be? Is that the way it's going to be, Richard Carter? OK. OK. Liquor store. Your call time on the set is 8 AM. If you arrive at 8 AM, you're late. If you're late, you're fired. If you get the sniffles, or you're sleepy, or depressed, or your boyfriend or girlfriend cheats on you, you do not leave the set and go home early. You get over it. You work 12 hours and you rest 12 hours. We call it the kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. I'm Murphy's Law. Anybody know what Murphy's Law is? Please, please come. I'll wait for my introduction. That is Murphy's Law. What can go wrong will go wrong. He won't come over until you introduce him. What did you do to him? Attention! Have me stand up. Every summer, we bring a seasoned professional filmmaker to teach you, to mentor you, to impart the wisdom and the secrets of professional show business. In the past, we've had cinematographers, lighting designers, grips and gappers from cities such as Shreveport and Florida. Now this summer, our special guest comes all the way from the film capital of the world, North Hollywood. Now welcome the director of our summer feature student film, Skippy Diggler III. I can actually talk, I'm just not supposed to. I like you. My new friends, it goes without saying that I do not need to be here. I had a tiny opening in my schedule when your fearless leader, Professor Arscott, saw my ad on the internet and called me and he said, that he had a small, struggling film school in East Texas, and he needed a professional filmmaker. Someone who could fill you up from my bottomless well of cinematic knowledge. So to honor his request, I'm here. OK, that was great. Now I'd like to introduce our crew. I don't care. Now the only crew member that will speak to me, and that is your first assistant director, my first AD is a force of nature, a mini-me. They yell, they scream, they fall on a sword for me or stick one in if necessary. Who is he or she? I want to meet this monster. I'm Hilda. I'll kill for you. Oh my, I like it. What a shame, you're fired. What? You can't do that. Am I the director? You can't just walk in here and fire students. They paid to be in this class. Then I'm not the director, am I? I thought you wanted this to be professional. All right, all right. Hilda, I'm sorry, but I have to let the director do what a director does. Because this summer is going to be professional. Now, who will be my first AD? Hmm? 
It's a tie. I'll break it. You. You are my killer. Give him some room, please. Back up. I said back up. You're waving that orange vitamin crap under his nose? It's organic. It fixes everything on a film set. Here. Give him these. All of you. Get out of here. Go get me that box of vet stops. <coughs> you okay? No, I'm doomed. The film kids, they're gonna kill me. This is just like high school all over again. You were a first AD in high school? No. I mean, look at me. I'm bully bait. I'm little. I'm not cool. For God's sake, I pass out when I get excited. I mean, I thought college would be different. I thought I could start over here and make some friends. Is he alive? For now. I don't think Carter's ready to be Skippy's killer on the set. There you go, getting soft again, Richard. Carter, I've sent boys like you to the jungles of Vietnam because they failed my class. Now, most of those boys came back with a wife and a couple of kids. Now, you'll be fine. Now, go get me that box of vet stops. You gave him soda and a candy bar? It was an emergency. My God, Richard, sometimes you have no compassion. Box of F-stops. Get a box of F-stops. What the F is an F-stop? Hey, uh, that's not a thing. Our Scott's messing with you. Wait, so F-stops aren't real? F-stops are real. That's how much light you let through the camera lens. But a box of F-stops is not. Why would he do that? Because he's our Scott. This is what it's like to be my friend. Run! What are you doing at my table? Um, Richard is, was a professional stag actor in Hollywood. Uh, no, I wasn't. Uh, he means sag actor in Hollywood. S screen actor skilled. No, you said a stag actor on a soap opera. No, 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 I didn't. I, I was an actor on a soap opera. Stag, sag, sag, is a union for film actors. Well, it's all kind of the same, isn't it? Soaps and porn, the lowest of the low in show business. Let's get back to my original question. Why are you sitting with my cast? A part of Richard's job here at the school is to act every summer in the summer feature. Not in mine. But if you... Amateur actors. Like all of you here, you're not really bad actors. You're just simply not actors. You're wet clay to be pushed and pulled by Skippy Diggler III, a quivering lump of humanity to be sculpted and molded into a cinematic performance. But I cannot, I repeat, I cannot make a performance from a dry and cracked Pot pulled from the trash heap of Hollywood has-beens. Or as in Richard's case here, never really was-beens, was you. It's okay. I have plenty to do this summer without acting. Can you come in my office? I know I should have warned you before I fired him, but he's just so awful and wrong for my movie. And he's a soap actor. 
You do want this to be a professional production, don't you? I just canceled your contract. I'll drive you back to the airport myself. Good. $6,000 for one day's work, not bad. I'm not paying you either. In California, we don't call it show business for nothing. I will sue you and your little school, too. I've been checking you out, and it's not good. Now, you're pretty much toast in North Hollywood these days, and if you sue me in my school, you sue the state of Texas, and together we'll squash you like the turb rolling bug you are. Now, do I send this email or not? No. Uh, I mean, I, w I wouldn't contact California. They're so crazy out there. There's unions, the FBI. Men wearing black suits in the summertime. Who does that? They're so cray cray. I'm rethinking Richard. And I love it. Him. Love him. Richard! Richard! Didn't you understand that I was testing you? It was like a screen test, except I didn't have a screen. And your reaction was so perfect, so method, so Meisner. Now, come on, young man. Come back up here and let's make a movie. We're going to have so much fun this summer. Whee! Have you all read your scripts? Good, because I haven't. Massacre in the Pines. Who wrote this piece of Wagupu? I did. Well, aren't you all things to everyone? Writer, actor, perhaps brain surgeon. What's that saying in the South? Why, bless your little heart. And what's your tiny masterpiece about? It's a psychological war. Students like that kind of stuff. Then I've probably done it. I mean, seen it. And fortunately for you, I work organically. I am, in California, what they call a free-range director. And I work that way with my actors also. So tell me your name, and I'll begin your journey into my movie. Well, um, I'm Cherry. I'm a theater major. Ingenue. Innocent, twirler in high school, ambitious, somewhat twisted childhood. Oh, there's some dark stuff in there. All the ingredients of a movie star. Well, what about me? Mr. What About Me, is that your name? Um, no, it's Broker. Okay, Broker, there you go. You don't follow the rules, you're not too bright, and you probably will be dead soon. What? In the movie. I'm complimenting you. You put the blue in blue collar. You're the working man's hero. Yo, Mr. North Hollywood, Nelda Bell here. You insult these kids again and I will kick your ass. Oh my God, you're perfect. An empty husk of a woman, broken, probably widowed, living alone, still watering your tiny plants on the windowsill of your kitchen and your bedroom closet stuffed with feather boas. 
hands and Mardi Gras beads and big floppy hats. Damn. I just got the chills. Look at the hair on my arms. That's a wrap for today. Do you want to do me? Sure, Richard. Let's play. Say your name. My name is Richard Stone. once had hope, but that's been gone for quite a while. In fact, the real you was probably snuffed out long, long ago by someone close to you, perhaps your father, of some violent trauma you could never quite recover from, leaving you forever with the feeling that you're not enough, that no one could ever love you. My, what a will to survive you had. You dreamed and danced and sang your way off the proverbial farm all the way to Hollywood, where people like me ate your soul and spit you out like day-old sushi. start fresh tomorrow. Thank you. Here's the breakdown of the script, shot sheets for each day, and the storyboards. Oh, goody. Actually, I need a room to work in. You can have the equipment room. As a professional, I think you'll love all the lights and cameras, C-stands, clamps, and tools we have. It's state-of-the-art, you know. There is no such thing as a box of F-stops. Tomorrow's a big day. It's the first day in your long journey of becoming a professional. Go home and rest in quiet contemplation of your futures. And why don't you show me the equipment room? Maybe give me a key? Okay. Walk this way. This. This. My dreams fulfilled. Amazing, isn't it? The TV station here in town was going to throw these lights out. They couldn't believe that I wanted their old junk. They didn't see the possibilities, but I did. They don't make them like they used to. No, they don't, do they? But I get it. And this is incredible. Well, uh... Let's be off. You've got a big day ahead of you tomorrow. Here's your key to the equipment room. You want to be a filmmaker? You work for me, you gotta be tough, ruthless, and mean. You gotta protect me and no one else, okay? I'm your big break. It's 
restaurant inside. All you have to do is sign your name. Everything else is taken care of. I don't like you. I know. R. Scott begged me not to fire you. It was sad, almost pathetic. And now here you are, far, far away from the fame and the glory. A little old teacher in a little old town this side of nowhere. I wonder what it's like to be you. How was it? It was weird. Like every summer. I have this idea of how it should go, but... never does. Well, maybe tomorrow? You scared me. I thought you were Hilda. Are you weren't sure you were coming tonight. Not after you took her job. This year? Does Hilda even have pronouns? Yes, everyone does. Keep this up. Your pronouns are going to be was, were. Can I see this? Come on, let's get this over with. Go ahead, take your best shot. I deserve it. Do you honestly think I fought bullies all my life just to become one? Then why did you chase me today? I'm a production assistant now. I have to get everybody a water, even the ones that took my job. Oh my God, I'm so happy right now. But I did steal your job and for that, I'm extremely sorry. The director's a prick. I'm done with pricks. Oh, because, you know. Uh, Carter's drunk. What he's trying to say is he respects you and he would be honored to be your friend. Although how incredibly stupid he is, he is honored that you could ever forgive him for his lack of manners and brains. Look, there's someone more your speed. <laughs> Oh 
Oh, that last one was so strong. I'm seeing a double and a single. What do you call that? Is that a thruple? Are you a thruple or a thruple? Do you have names? Poe. He didn't mean that. I mean, my name's Brian Ho. This is Brian Ho. We're freshmen. But you're both Ho's, correct? <laughs> I actually just said that to myself in my head. Oh my gosh, I love college. Did you fall? I did. Well, you're lucky these boys were under you. Broker, you disappoint me. But I am lucky. What are you doing? I don't teach in the summertime, remember? That's right, Richard. You're screwed. No, 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 but, but, but the last summer you said that I, I messed up and that wasn't going to happen again. And it won't, now will it? You're leaving me alone with that monster? Ours got the monster. I have to sleep in the same tent with the guy. Jesus. And don't try to call me either. We'll be in the deserts of New Mexico or the mountains of Montana. There's no phone service and I won't take a bath. Grow up, Richard. I hope a bear eats both of you. You don't taste good. bathroom already, Arsh guy we just left. Surprise! I rented this place. You rented an apartment across from the film house for our vacation? Yes, I did. But I begged my wife to let me go with you. Don't be so selfish, you big baby. This is bigger than our vacation. This is a film program at SFA. Well, I guess you're right. It is kind of a vacation. But instead of wild animals, we're going to be watching college kids. do that to me again. When I say cut, it does not mean to ruin my day. Cut means that you can breathe again. You are fantastic. You're such a natural. I mean, how did we get so lucky to get you? Is your name really Cherry? Well, my daddy wanted to call me Plum. He said I was Plum Beautiful. Fascinating. Now, my mama wouldn't have it. She said, the boys will call her names. Plum Dumb, Plum Easy, Plum Pitiful, Plum Ing. So, they compromised on Cherry. I like it. Well, you're the cherry on the top of my movie. Now, Richard, was that a character choice you made a while ago? Do you even know what a character choice is? When I was watching you, I felt nothing. Cherry sees you in the mirror and you terrify her. I wasn't actually on camera. Oh, 
There's no small parts, only small actors, right, Cherry? <sighs> Richard, look at that. You bore her. Not only is she funny, but she can act. All right, back to first positions, everyone. That means we're gonna film you again. I know how soap operas are. They don't do multiple takes. As long as the lights are on and they can hear you, they don't care if you can't act. Quiet on set. Cherry, darling, are you ready to wow me again? Carter, go wake up Cherry now. Cherry. Cherry, are you okay? Come on, Cherry, you've got to wake up and do the scene. Carter! Quiet on the set. Sound. What? Camera. I can't understand what he's saying. Sound. Camera. Blah, blah, blah. What's wrong with you? Do you want to be my first lady or not? For God's sakes, man. Take charge. Say it louder. Loud. Sound? Louder! Sound? Damn it, Carter! Louder! Sound! Now that's a first AD. Quiet on the set! Sound! Rolling. Camera! Speed. Scene one, take two, you mothers. Oh, okay. And action. Mirror, mirror, in my hand. Will I ever find the perfect man? Cut! 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 Is she alive? Make a wardrobe! Somebody fix her! Sir, Cherry stayed up pretty late last night. I think she's just sleeping it off, if you know what I mean. She's living in the moment like a real actor. Carter? Sound! Rolling! Camera! Speed! Scene one, take three, you mothers. Perfect. Moving on. We'll fix it in post. And action. That is lunch, everybody. Be back in here in one hour, ready to roll, or heads will roll. Stop! Put that bowl down. We're professionals. Actors eat first. Actors, actors, all to the front of the line, please. All of you, actors, actors, you back up. There we go. By the way, teachers eat last. Right over here. <sighs> Cut. 
Capstones! Capstones! Oh, oh. What's your name? Charlotte. Are you the costumer? Costume designer. Oh, you're vegetarian. Lacto ovo, vegetarian, actually. Mm-hmm. Could you do me a favor and make me something special, a mask? Sure. Let me just finish my salad. Can you imagine if a costumer had said that to Hitchcock during the making of Psycho? You would be in the shower scene, not Tippy Hedren. Make the mask now. You can have lunch tomorrow. It's Janet Lee. May I have some more, please? Yes, you may. We're back. All you mothers back on set now! All right, everyone, let's turn the cameras around and shoot Richard. <laughs> I mean, his coverage. Carter, you might want to tone it down just a bit. I think calling the cast and crew you mothers is a bit too much. You can think that, just don't say it out loud, all right? No, shoot, back away, learn something here. Richard, could you come here, darling? Would you put this on for me? I was so confused today watching you, and I was just like, I, I don't know what to do about this character. And then Charlotte, the costumer, handed me this at lunch, and I was just like, wow. No, 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 this is not in the script. I know, but neither is bad acting. All right, pictures up. Let's do this. And action. Skippy says... Tell him I'll drive him to the motel in a minute. Skippy doesn't need you tonight. He's got a ride with Nova Bell. You learned a lot today, didn't you? My voice was, was I professional? It's just like being back in Hollywood. Mr. Daigler, you're a real son of a bitch, you know that? That's sweet, thank you. Oh. No, I'm serious. You're so mean to those kids and Richard. 99% of those kids will never make a dent in Hollywood. Now, a few of them will move out there. They'll try their hand at it. And then in six months, they'll be back home again, selling cars, washing dishes, making babies, moving on with their lives. And people think I'm the devil. But I'm not. I'm actually an angel in disguise. I tell those kids what their parents are too afraid to say. You'll never make it in Hollywood. Richard made it. On a soap opera. Every once in a while you get some broken soul that's willing to spend his life on the fringes of show business. They think it's their destiny. It's manifest destiny. But it's not. They'll never be anybody. And everybody in the business knows it. So we give them a bone or two, and then we eat them alive. The Richard you're seeing right now 
his leftovers. Well, at least there's something to chew on. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm glad y'all are having so much fun. But could y'all tone it down a bit? Our guests are trying to have a good evening as well. Who are you? I'm Ben Hur, the owner. Ben Hur. I loved your movie, Toga Boy. <laughs> <laughs> You did great today, kiddo. Thank you. I actually didn't do anything today, but that's good to know for the future. Kiddo? As in, Cherry stayed out pretty late last night, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. Said the rat to the big cheese, you high and mighty weasel. Snitches get stitches, Carter. Don't you watch TV? I screwed the pooch, didn't I? Oh. Poor dog. Like your film skills. You have no idea what you're doing right now, do you? No, I don't. I'm just a terrible person, a heartbreaker, dream taker. Did Grandpa Skippy give you his record collection too? First of all, I don't deserve to be in charge of anything. I know that. I, I don't even know how it happened, but I'll just stop right now. We don't want you to stop. Communicate. That's all you need to do. We've got your back as long as you've got ours. I get that you're trying to be assertive, but don't confuse your mouth with your asshole. Tell us what you want us to do. Don't be yelling at people and their mothers. We might be filmmakers, but we've got feelings too. Anything? No. Boy, these kids are fat. In the film house, do you see anything? No. Oh, wait a minute. There's four kids leaving to go to the red house next door. They're fat. Oh, what are they doing? Well, offhand, I'd say they're partying. On a school night, doing exactly what I told them not to do. I'll put a stop to that right now. I'll catch every last one of them with a beer in their sweaty little hands and flunk them on the spot. Let's go. Boy, you're a heck of a spy. Damn it, Jim. I'm just saying, you're gonna ruin the whole thing the first night. Here, have a beer. We're on vacation. I'm exactly what R. Scott says about me. I'm, I'm a weak, sensitive, needy, depressed mess of a man. I'm, I'm letting Skippy run all over me because I want to be liked. How did you make it in Hollywood all those years? I just didn't give up. The fans loved you. No, no, they loved my character. They didn't love me. And what was your character? Lillian... You spent 20 years being weak, sensitive, needy, and depressed on a soap opera. You were the good guy who believed if he just held on, stayed steady, tried to do the right thing, that life would work out. In other words, the perfect man. A man who was not afraid to feel or fail. No wonder those ladies all loved you. 
Well, fortunately, real life's not like a soap opera. Our lives are a bit like a soap opera, don't you think? No, no, we're more like a PBS kind of thing. We are way too cool for daytime. <laughs> Can you believe that we got thrown out of a bar for having fun? Ben's a good guy. He just won't put up with bad behavior. Will you put up with my bad behavior? Mr. Diggler. <laughs> Damn those kids. Our Scott, do you remember when we were their age, 18, 19 years old? Here we go again. You would chase anything in a skirt. Do you hear yourself? Can you say canceled? Well, I think you're missing my point here. We were young, foolish. We climbed mountains. We fished the streams. We were young, restless men. You're drunk. And so are they. Those kids out there are drunk on life. And they're going to screw up. I say, let them do it. We did. And we turned out all right. They will too. I was really proud of you tonight. Not so much today, but definitely tonight. I'm sorry I ratted you out to Skippy. It's all good. You know how that first day on set you fainted under pressure? Well, for me, when things get weird, I sleep. That's so cool. I faint and you sleep. So you weren't still messed up from the party when you slept on the set? Skippy was creeping me out, so I acted asleep. I'm an actress, remember? <laughs> sleep has gotten me through lots of bad stuff in my life. Is bad stuff about to happen here? I guess we'll see. College is poison. Boot! Did I scare you? I thought you were Skippy. How many times do I have to tell you, don't bring your work home with you? Oh, Lillian, I don't know why you like me. I don't. I love you. Now you're scaring me. Because I love you too. Just didn't know I could say it. Just did. Now come on before mean old Skippy eats you alive. You, come here. Nice clothes. Is everything all right, my little man? I'm good, I just stayed out late. But perhaps you shouldn't do that during production. It weakens you, takes your strength away. Sort of like an athlete on the big game. 
You got it. Yes, sir. All right, Broker, you're up at bat right now. You hear Cherry screaming. You run into her bedroom and you confront the killer. Can I hit him? Uh, I don't, I don't think that's in the script, but do whatever you feel is right. Look, I can't really see in this thing, so it's up to you not to hurt me, okay? I got you, Mr. Richard. I won't even touch you. Uh -huh. Am I still screaming at this point? Oh, absolutely. E except for rehearsal, you do it in half voice, okay? It's so very quietly. Save your voice. And then, when it's time to do it for real, you scream for real, all right? All right, let's, let's do a rehearsal. Right now, Carter. Rehearsal's up, half speed. And action. Perfect. Let's shoot it for real. Quiet on set. Sound. Rolling. Camera. Speed. Scene one, take 23. And... <laughs> you screwed the pooch and my girlfriend! I had no idea you and Trey were even a thing. <laughs> Did you just equate me to a dog? What's equate mean? You said to Carter, you screwed the pooch and my girlfriend. Equate means to consider one thing, that's me, the same as another. That's the metaphorical dog that doesn't even exist in this story, broker. I love dogs, but, but Carter is a dog. A very bad dog. Are you and I a couple? No. Are we married? No, sir. Ma'am? Do I belong to you? That's a very tricky question. But I don't belong to anyone. Now do I? No. Be very careful on this next one. Do you own my body. Oh, Jerry, you know what I mean. What you mean did not happen. I did not have sex with Carter. I could have, but it did not happen. Wait, you mean to tell me that I could have... Cut! Don't touch him. Take 15. Everybody go downstairs, drink some water with that orange stuff in, and get all this personal business out of your system. We've got a movie to make here. Now go. Don't you ever do that again. Excuse me? Don't ever speak to my cast like that again. This is a class. I am responsible for the safety of these kids for the entire time that they are on this campus. The day after you leave, I still have to get up and work with these students and their parents and the administration of this school. So let's be clear about this. I don't work for you. You work for me.
I don't work for anybody. Except for you. Ed tube right there? Don't even go there, Shakespeare. You think you're Caesar and everyone else on set is stabbing you in the back? I think you need to read the play again. No one's hurting you except yourself. You did this all on your own. We thought we were your friends, but we're not. We wanted to be your best friends, but we're obviously not. I'm not even sure we were ever friends. You're just a selfish, ambitious, greedy little wannabe freshman filmmaker willing to climb over anyone to get to the top. In other words, you're perfect for show business. <laughs> Mr. Diggler, is that you? What do you want? I just wanted to tell you how wonderful last night was. Do you not know the rules of romance on a movie set? It's the first rule of Fight Club. Broker send you over here to plead his case? Carter, Brian, Ryan, which one of my many boyfriends are you defending? I'm sorry, I, I saw you and needed a friend and I thought maybe you might need a friend too. A woman friend, I mean. Men just, men just really get on my nerves these days. These days? They'd still hit you with a club and drag you off to their cave if they thought they could get away with it. It's just so confusing. I know how to handle boys. You play weak, play smart, play dumb, play strong. All day and night, play something. Just don't be yourself. It, it wears me out. Who did this to you? What do you mean? You act like you were born with a broken heart, but you weren't. It happened to you somewhere along the way. Good girl. My first memories are of people saying good girl to me. When I did what people wanted, I was a good girl, and life was better. And if you didn't? I was a bad girl. Hmm. Have you seen Flight Club? I remember you. I 
It was a town car. Black. Clean. Discreet. Slowly rolling down the twisting, narrow curves of Mulholland Drive. I was trying to learn my lines under the swinging lights of the street lamps that lit each curve. On one particularly hard turn, I looked up and I saw you. Your eyes, staring, hating, envious. There in the rearview mirror, like the small gold buttons on your chauffeur's uniform, you stared at me in the mirror. You weren't allowed to speak to the clients. But you did. You said. I wonder what it's like to be you. Carter, let's get the show on the road. Oh, Cherry. You're already on the set. Good girl. Can I come in? Who the hell are you? Our Scott, it's Charlotte. From film class, I've been in the program for two years. Oh, right. I remember you. Come on in, Charlene. Now, what do you want, Carlotta? Did you see what happened at the film house this morning? I have no idea what you're talking about. We're on vacation. This is my friend Jim. We're together. Well, not together together, you know, but... I know what you're doing here and why. Well, crap. I told you. Skippy is the devil. He's evil. He made me cover up Mr. Richard's face with a mask just so he wouldn't be famous from a student film. Carter... Carter's gained the freshman 15, but it's all gone to his pants. After three days. You guys can't do without me for three days? Now, how is that possible? It's always like this. You always leave us the first day of feature, and you never know how bad it is until you get back. Well, I'll have you know I made films out of nothing here for 40 years, all by myself. I had no help at all, and I paid for everything. I just got tired of babysitting all you snowballs. I'm, I needed a break. You're the reason we're all here. You are SFA Film. Uh, what was your name again? It's Kristen Arscott. Okay, Charlotte, here's what I need you to do. Call this number in California and stop smoking. Where's Nell Bell? She was just here and she needs to be on the set. Get her pictures up. Sir. Uh, Nelda Bell has left the building. Well, she's not Elvis. Tell her to get back at the building. It's her big scene. She told me to tell you it's the third rule of Fight Club. She tapped out? I'm afraid so. She will never work in this town again. Nacogdoches? You are Nelda Bell. What? Yes, my first AD must be always willing to die for me or kill for me. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Oh, but you will once I call action! Ah! Get out of the way! I hate your hair. Charlotte? Vegan? Costume girl? Smells like smoke? Where are you? Ooh. Can I help you? Yes, do you do makeup and hair? Why do directors think that costume designers do hair and makeup? No. We think that because it's not a real job.
Hello, Richard. Put this on. <laughs> I can't become Nelda. <laughs> There's no business like show business. Quiet on the set. Carter, are you okay? Cherry, I'm so sorry for everything. Broker, I'm sorry for anything that I might have done or even thought about doing. I'm sorry to everyone else here. Film kids are the best. Ryan? Rolling. Ryan? Speed. Last take and action. Mirror, mirror in night. My... I'm sorry. I. I can't do this. You are under arrest for a whole lot of bad things in North Hollywood. Cut! Stop! You got the wrong man. Do I have to do everything around here? Oh my god! Broker! Oh my god, Broker, please. Please don't die on me now. That fake knife hurt like a real one. Okay. Where's, Where's Mr. Richard? Richard? <laughs> Carter, are you okay? Hilda, you're now the director of this mess. Fix it, will you? So you want to be a filmmaker? Well, I'll tell you the secret. Read as many books as you can. Travel the world. Live as if you're going to die tomorrow. Most of your time on this earth, you'll wake up, work, eat, sleep, and do it all over again for the rest of your days. And somewhere in all this, you'll remember the first time you kissed. The thrill you felt when you first fell in love and when you first made love. You'll feel deep, deep emotion when you think about your mother and father, brothers and sisters, your wife, your husband, and if you're lucky, your children. I'm hard on you kids because life out there is going to be hard on you. And I want you to live the best lives you can. So I hope you learned something this summer. Number one, don't be a criminal. B. 99 takes for one scene is just flat wrong. You'll wear out the actors. And finally, number four, people are complex. Learn that. People are more than just high cheekbones and smooth skin. They've got bumps, many in the wrong places. Some of us have bumps you can't even see. But when the lights go down in that big movie in the sky, remember, we're all the same. 